Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinkard. I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As a reminder, all the listeners, we're on Anchor, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on so many other podcasting platforms. And if you're looking for us in the video format, you can find us on the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff going on there. Drink, feels like it's been a while, but it's great to be back with you here. <laughs> uh, it feels like it's been a while because it's probably have been a while. Um... Uh, and you know now we back in the saddle like the training so you know what time it is how everything with you well it's good i think the last time we did a show the with the uh i don't think the astros and red sox had even started and then there was some got a little murky in between there with games two and three just uh, go out central listen um and i think we this might get brought up once or twice but we definitely missed the mark on that but you know, we ain't going to get them all right, but we, we definitely ain't going to get them all wrong. So another day, another dollar. We got to give the streets what they need. We see what they don't. We definitely going to say what they want. We done made that clear. Set your plates because it's time to eat. And you know, last but not least, let's talk some sports, baby. What we got, Jay? All right, this is episode 12 of season three. We're going to talk about the NBA 75th anniversary team. We're going to recap week seven in the NFL. And we're going to talk about the weekend in college football. And then from there, you know what we got to talk about first. Game one of the World Series tonight, folks. Make sure your TV is tuned in. Um, I, you know, I think the opening, uh, the first pitch is at uh, 8.09 Eastern Standard Time. Um, we got uh, the Braves going to have Charlie, Charlie Morton. going to be their starting pitcher. Astros have Franber Valdez. I'm, I'm, I'm trying here. What, how you say that? Franber Valdez. Okay, there we go. Boom. So, with that said, um, it looks like the Astros are the favorites to get it done tonight. So, what say you about what we're gonna see in Game One or the or, or, or the the biggest the biggest game in, in Major League Baseball? Well, I think the I think the Astros deserve to be the favorites. Uh, if you had to, I guess if you took a random poll of who you would thought out of these two teams would make the World Series, it probably would be the Astros. Um, especially if you took one after the Ronald Acuna injury, uh, I'm still I'm still pretty surprised that Atlanta's made it this far. But um, all credit to them for the you know the front office for going out there and just you know dropping a net on the whole league and just getting outfielders who were just some of these guys were cast off. I mean Eddie Rosario at the uh, you know trading deadline for Cleveland. I mean this guy couldn't get anything done, and then here he comes in the NLCS and he gets 14 hits, wins the you know. NLCS MVP and I think he's the first player in that series to get 14 hits in a series in just six games all the other players with 14 hits in a LCS dead it had to go seven games uh, but you look at Rosario you look at Duvall uh, Jock Peterson uh, Jorge Soler he'll DH tonight I mean they they went out and they got a whole new outfield I mean this was the same team who had Marcel Azuna at the beginning of the year and then he's over here hitting somebody or something uh, ridiculous just you got you to admire what the Atlanta Braves uh, have overcame to get here um, with the Acuna injury. Um, the starting pitching uh, didn't look all that hot for, you know, at, at, at different stages of the season. But, I mean, when you look at Ian Anderson, uh, Charlie Morton, Max Freed, I mean, these guys, they put it together. And then the bullpen, I mean, that was something coming into the season that you look at and said, I'm not too sure about some of these guys. But, you know, Will Smith, Tyler Matzik, and uh, AJ Mentor, I mean, these are three guys who have been locking it down, all of them left-handed guys. So I think uh, the Braves are certainly deserving to be here. I think they're going to put up a heck of a fight. Uh, but in the end, I, th I think the Astros, the Astros, I think they're too good for them. And I think uh, as long as their heads are on straight and they're focused and they're not, they're not taking this moment for granted, uh, I think they're going to win this series in six games. Uh, I think they do win game one tonight. If you remember in game five of the ALC is from a Valdez after two very rough starts, uh, one in the uh, in the division round against the White Sox. And then uh, I think it was, uh, was it game might have been game. No, it was game one. He wasn't all that effective in either start. But in game five, he locked it down. He pitched eight innings, only gave up three hits, one run, uh, had had the sinker working, just ground balls everywhere. The Astros just vacuuming them up across the infield. Uh, I think as, as long as he's locked in and he can give you something, which I think he will, I think the Astros take care of business tonight. Uh, Charlie Morton, I mean, there's going to be a familiar face out there for Houston. Uh, Morton, part, a part of that uh, 2017 uh, World Series champion team. He'll be going against his former team. 
So I, that's one of the things I'm thinking about for Houston. When you have a guy in Charlie Morton on the mound, the Astros got some familiarity with him. You think about a guy in Brent Strom, the pitching coach for Houston. You know, what kind of insight does he have for how, he, how Morton may attack these hitters? I think that's one of the things I'm looking at. Uh, and then, you know, going back to a guy like Rosario on the other side, and even Jock Peterson, uh, Jock Peterson was on that Dodgers team in 2017. So, that, so some of these guys, there's familiarity there. And then Eddie Rosario was in the American League uh, earlier this year, and then he's been with the Twins for several years. So, I mean, uh, the Astro, Astro pitching, the Astro staff, some of these guys remember some of these guys um, on the, in the Braves lineup. So I think some of that familiarity could be a great service to them. The Astros obviously have the experience edge, uh, five straight uh, uh, American League Championship Series and now three World Series appearances in five years. I mean, nothing phases them. You think about how game two and game three of the American League Championship Series went. Uh, Boston tags them for three grand slams. They blow them out in back-to-back -back games. And they just get, they get back off the mat in a close game four. And then they just, the, they start swinging their bats. And uh, that now you have them in the World Series. Uh, I, I think it is going to be, I think Atlanta's going to, you know, they're going to put up a fight and they will make it interesting. They will make the Astros sweat. Uh, I think it would go a long way when you talk about things like home field advantage. I don't think it means as much in the sport of baseball as it is in football, or basketball. Um, but I think from a confidence standpoint, it, it would be it would serve Atlanta well uh, to win one of these two games in Houston. If they go down 2-0, it's not unheard of. You know, I'm not saying they can't come back and get back in the series. But I think from a pure p confidence uh, standpoint and being the underdog, it would be in their best interest to win one of these two games in Houston, go to Atlanta for the three games with a 1-1 split and see how things progress from there. But I think, you know, I talked about the Braves bullpen for a little bit, but when the Astros starting pitching was completely imploding against Boston, the, the, these relief pitches held it down completely. And I think they got a deeper bullpen um, than Atlanta. We're gonna talk about Christian Javier, Phil Maton has been very good. Uh, obviously, Presley and Graveman and Ryan Stanek. I saw a stat today. These guys have pitched 34 innings in the playoffs so far, and they got about a 1.06 ERA, which equates to giving up four runs. That, that's absolutely outstanding. And they've been not only have they been doing um, good work, it's been great work at extended periods of time. I mean, Javier has been every time Javier hits the hill, he's got to go to uh, minimum. It feels like three innings just because there's a starting pitcher out there who ain't getting it done. Uh, so I think it, the, if, if, Atlanta, if Atlanta can pull a Boston and just wear out some of these starting pitchers and maybe tax the bullpen a little too much, I think that maybe that's their best chance. But both of these offenses are great. Uh, I think the difference will wind up being the Astros pitching will be just a little bit better because even though I got a lot of respect for what the Braves are able to do from an offensive standpoint, um, this Houston lineup is just built different. They will have to make a decision when you look at games three, four, and five in Atlanta, what they do with Alvarez and what they do with Brantley. How do they mix and match their outfield? I'm going to tell you something. If Jordan Alvarez keeps hitting the way he's hitting, I don't think there's any way you can keep him out in the lineup, even though they may be somewhat uncomfortable with him defensively because the, he, he's their designated hitter. When you go to Atlanta, you lose the DH. I'm thinking of something. It might be in their best interest to put Alvarez in left, Brantley in right, and move Tucker in the middle because as I mentioned to you, they got a guy, uh, Martin Maldonado behind the plate, who's really been struggling this playoffs. Probably, I think he's got about maybe two, two or three hits. It hasn't been pretty. He's batting, I don't think he's batting 100. Not very good. So when they go to Atlanta, they're gonna have Maldonado in there and the pitcher's gonna be batting. So, I mean, in reality, you might have two fairly easy outs at the bottom of that lineup. And if you take Alvarez out of the equation, then you're looking at a guy, McCormick, who. All do you know with all due respect and I got I do have respect for Chaz McCormick and Jose Siri but they ain't Jordan Alvarez so I think you I think Dusty Baker that's gonna be a hard choice for him but I think in the end if I'm if I'm pulling the strings right now I'm gonna have Alvarez in the lineup the guy's just too hot um, to take out uh, in my estimation but in the end Astros and six okay okay um so I'm, I'm looking at some 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 numbers so uh, I was looking at some um you know let, let's let's go with um, the numbers for the Astros. The Astros they batting two eighty one. That's the batting average. Um, they got a, a four point five zero ERA, and evidently in the playoffs they outscoring opponents by twenty one runs. Which 
I know if you watched the last series, you kind of probably scratching your head, but you gotta understand they didn't play four. This is, this will be the fourth series or the third series, I should say, um, that they didn't play. So I, I guess I understand that the Braves batting two fifty, um, batting average, uh, three point four one um, ERA, and they're outscoring opponents by seven runs. So you know, both teams took a, a different route to get here, right? Um, for for the Braves, well, for both teams, but I think for the Braves more, that that trade deadline what just did wonders, did wonders for the team. When you when you think about the Braves lost their best player in Ronald Acuna, and everybody pretty much stuck a fork in them. They was done, and like you said about the Astros in the last series, well, just since the trade deadline, it seemed like the Braves didn't pick they self up off the mat and showed that hey. Show us a little respect over here. And, you know, they was talking to me. Me. Uh, I got to show them some, res some respect because I thought they was done in five. Last series, um, they came out and got it done in six. So, that I, you know, I got to show them a little respect. But, Jay, what, I, what I'd like for you to hit on um, specifically is, so, we, we know National League play different from American League. We got the DH and all that. What... What advantage could the Braves have at home, and then what advantage could the, uh, the Astros have at home since they play by two different sets of rules? I think if there's any, if you talk about advantage, disadvantage, I think the, uh, I think the Braves will benefit from uh, from playing on the road because they'll get another big bat in there. Jorge Soler, you know, he's dealing with a calf injury, but he's good, he's good to go now. So when you look at Solaire, when you look at Peterson, Rosario, and Duvall, when you have all those guys in a lineup, um, that's a lot to deal with. I think what it's what it's going to come down to, as I was explaining about, um, you know, what what the Astros do with their DH when you go to a National League ballpark and you lose the DH, it's going to come down. They may have to. They will likely, if they play Alvarez, they're going to sacrifice some defense because you're going to put Tucker in the middle. Tucker's a really good outfielder. Normally plays right field. Brantley is really solid, but you wouldn't call him a great defender. And then Alvarez, at, at this stage, just simply hasn't played enough to really, for us to really know. But at this stage, you know, he's a you know, below average outfielder. He's, he's, he's out there to hit the ball and hit the ball hard. So the, I think the Braves, when they go to their ballpark, they'll have the advantage when you lose because it's a bigger deal for Houston to maybe pull Alvarez or lose, you know, a plus outfielder in the middle in center field, be it McCormick or Siri, whereas the Braves, yeah, they're losing Jorge Soler. But when you talk about losing Soler or Alvarez, there's really no comparison, you know, at this particular moment in time. So that is an advantage that Atlanta has. I think the, the advantage is Atlanta. Atlanta has the advantage a little bit when it comes to the DH, when Houston loses the DH and has to make a decision you know, do they want more offense or do they want more defense? That's, uh, I think when when they play in Houston, um, both teams will be at full strength. You know, the Astros will have their normal lineup, their normal defense. Uh, it'll just be an added bonus for the Braves to have Soler in the lineup. Okay, okay. And so we got the over and under is eight and a half. You taking the over or the under? What's eight? Eight and a half runs tonight? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, I'll run tonight. Yeah, I'll go over. I think it's, I think it's going to be an offensive-driven series. I really do. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to take the Braves in seven. I mean, I'm sorry. The series will go seven. I'm going to take Houston. I'm sorry, folks. That's a typo. I think the series will go seven. I'm going to take Houston in seven. Two guys I just want to highlight for this series. Carl Tucker for the, the Astros. I think, you know, maybe did he take this and go ahead and show why he should be spotlighted. And then for the Braves, man, I'm gonna go with Freddie Freeman. Oh man, um, the the you know the catalyst. Those are two guys I think um gonna be the spotlight, you know, uh, of this series. And we'll see game one tonight, 8:09, first pitch on Fox. You know what it is. <laughs>